Okay, this is Julie here for Seconds Out. Carol Itaoma joins me to start off the year here on Seconds Out and obviously your brother starting off the year with a different kind of announcement today. Yours is for your first title fight, WBC International Light Heavyweight. Let's, let's start on that because to start off 2023 with something like this, big news. How long have you known about this, Carol? Um, just, well, obviously, got, I swear it got announced after my last fight. So about, I've known it since then and kept me in, in, in shape during Christmas. Yeah, that's the most important thing, obviously, to have that motivation because sometimes you can switch off over the, that kind of rest period. Absolutely, but obviously we know that it's an important night on the 28th and our first title. So I feel like it was important for me to, 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 to do, keep remaining and focused on the task ahead. We've just heard the announcement of your opponent. Just talk to him about him, what you think he's going to bring and... Uh, this is, of course, the biggest step of your career so far. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely the biggest step of my career for sure. But um, like I said many times before, I don't look into my opponents. I let my coach do that. I leave that to him. Anything external of the boxing is, is down to him. Well, instead of external from me getting in the ring, it's down to them. And um, I trust him. I've been with him since I was 14. So um, he's um, he studied it and now he's just implementing training through, practicing through training and implementing in the ring. Yeah, this is something you've kind of expected. We've done interviews before where you, you expect to kind of level up a lot, but how much credit do you give to BT for getting you in these fights? Obviously, still very early on in your career, let's be let's be honest. Yeah, it's a um, huge, huge appreciation to Queensbury, huge credit to my um, manager, Francis, for these opportunities because they don't, not all fighters get these opportunities. And now it's down to, down to me to take them both my hands. <laughs> how do you plan on doing that? Um, practicing through what everything I've done in the gym, practicing and putting it in the ring and um, not taking anything lightly because when you take something lightly, that's when you can slip up. Um, so that's, that's how I plan on getting it. Frank Warren speaks highly of you. Francis was speaking highly of you there, saying you're a consummate professional. What sort of things does that consume? What, what sort of things does that involve in your day-to-day -day life of being a consummate? Some people think that it's, 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 it's not just about boxing. It's... It's kind of not what you do in the ring, but it's what you do outside of the ring as well, I believe, um, to make you a, a complete individual, a complete professional in a sense. So um, I re uh, without, we've got a good relationship with my manager and it's um, one that's only going to improve and get better. As for your brother, how much influence do you think you've had on him with seeing him? Um, hyped up quite a lot. I've heard about him for some time now, but how much influence do you believe you've had on him? Um... It's hard to say because we, me and my brothers, we don't really openly speak about things like that. Um, but obviously, first time hearing from him, what he, what he yeah. kind of, you know, said that there. So um, when I heard that, it's um, as an older brother, it makes you feel happy that you're kind of, kind of, not leading him like a, I don't like that word, but guiding him in our direction. How far do you think you two can both? go then this year obviously in, in different respective levels and points in your professional career um, well Rico's got eight fights this year so can that be maintained really I believe so because obviously he's got a record to break so um, as long as he stays his body like fit um, and injury free which is putting everything into place for him to do that um, I don't see why he can't do that so when did this kind of idea of the record of breaking Mike Tyson's heavyweight world championship, the youngest record, when did this come about? Was there a moment when you it thought, damn? Him, it was from him when he basically obviously had a choice of to go Olympics or turn pro and do that. And he kind of, I remember him asking me, what's, what's, what's better? Like, what's more significant? And um, I said, look how many Olympic champions you get every four years. How many people break a record like that? And then I think that's when the light bulb went in his head and then it went from there. Wow, that's intriguing, I'm sure, to people watching as well. Let's let's kind of finish off then the 28th of this month. You're on a good undercard. Again, uh, you've been on these kind of undercards before, but the pressure of you and your brother fighting on the same night, like you spoke about at the, the press conference there, how much does this add, fighting on the same night? Yeah, I am... Um, it's like I said, we spoke about it. it's a blessing and um, it's, a, it's an important night for us. But like, all external things I want to I want to I want to forget about. Uh, we, we're going to speak about it and, and that's it. It's done. Um, we've got to focus on the task ahead of us. Appreciate your time, bro.
Good to speak Thank to you, you again. Very much.